in the heart of West Yorkshire, nestled between the Pennines and a history rich in industry, lies the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. It stretches from one end of Huddersfield to another, winding its way towards the edge of the unknown. And today, we're walking it from lock number one at Aspley Marina to the mysterious depths of Stanage Tunnel, a journey along water, history, and the soul of the North. This canal was born out of ambition, completed in 1811, an engineering marvel of its time. Today, it's a place of calm leisure, but once this was the lifeline for goods, for coal, for survival, each lock tells a story, and at lock number one, it all begins. Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you're all feeling strong and well. I'm feeling great after the Cleveland Way hike and thank you for all your comments on that video. We really enjoyed it. But today we are starting at uh, the Huddersfield Narrow Canal at lock number one heading towards Stanish Tunnel. Now Huddersfield has changed so much since the completion of uh, this canal in 1811. This used to be used for uh, cotton, wool, coal, transportation up and down the country. And uh, it's so quiet now. In fact, it's a little bit too quiet to think that it was all hustle and bustle back then. Um, a real working environment. Nice and steady though, nice and steady along the canal. But uh, it still looks beautiful. They've done a lot of work on it. You can see it's looking really good today. Nice and green still. So as we walk on, leaving lock number one behind, we're also leaving the town behind Huddersfield and getting a little bit more out into the sticks. And uh, this towpath is steeped in history, of course, and uh, it kind of echoes it echoes, <laughs> um, it echoes of the uh, of the past, of the boatmen, of the uh, of the goods that were brought up and down this canal. Beautiful day today. Sun is lovely, but it's pretty cool out of the sun. The winter is on its way. I've just passed through Mills Bridge, which is an oldie worldy little village, and I'm just passing uh, lock number twelve. Be interesting to see if the uh, canal builders were superstitious, will there be a lock 13? Um, so, uh, yes, passing all the old mills and warehouses, the old mills derelict and a lot of them silent now, some of them repurposed, but they are looming large and still looking great, even some of them overgrown with uh, nature taking over but they're just a remnant and a reminder of Huddersfield's industrial might. Um, and these waterways, the canals, they're what powered the industrial revolution. So if you look carefully, you can still find some old stuff like that uh, massive crane. That's part of a massive crane that will have uh, will have been used by that mill just over there that I'm just showing you. And uh, it's set down here by the river, by this weir. And I'm just climbing up here to show you. So the crane is uh, is down there, and the canal is here. So I imagine on this part here they'll have been loading from the mill and unloading from the boats and vice versa, uh, using that massive crane there. But um, what I do notice is how much, <laughs> what I do notice is how much nature just keeps reclaiming. The further and further we go along, it just keeps edging in more and more. So the, uh, the canal might have been tamed by engineers, but uh, nature is definitely taking over reclaiming so so we're moving on now deeper into the valley approaching lock number now let me see what number is this one are they superstitious i'm coming up to it i'll let you know 
So there is actually a lock 13, so they're not that superstitious. I'm not saying I'm superstitious, but I would never walk under a black cat. <laughs> so we are moving on nearer and nearer to Marsden, deeper into the valley, and the Pennines loom ahead. It's slow work moving by narrowboat. They say it's a different kind of time out here. A slower time. These boats once raced to meet demand. They now drift as if knowing that the world will wait. So I've just arrived in Slawit, Slathwit, a village rooted in history, but it is moving forward. We've got lovely coffee shops and restaurants. Had many a lovely time in Slawit. So I'm just passing lock number 40. It's been quite a hike and I haven't completed it yet. Determined to get to Stanish Tunnel. The weather's letting me down a little bit. We've got water coming from the sky as I walk by the canal bank. And uh, water is really the storyteller here. Um, not only reflecting the journey ahead, but also reflecting everything that's passed through. The wool, the cotton, the coal, all woven in by this thin stretch of canal. And now the, the canal tightens as if the land itself is pushing me towards our final destination. And that's of course Marsden, home of the legendary Stanage Tunnel. And so here we are at the uh, entrance to Stanage Tunnel, Britain's highest, longest and deepest canal tunnel. Uh, I think it's three, over three miles of complete darkness. Um, can you imagine? I mean, boats go through it now with electric lights. I'll just give you a little look through. <laughs> I don't know why the gates are up. Uh, it's obviously closed today. But uh, can you imagine, uh, boats go through there with all the electric lights on and uh, they can see, but back in the day, you were going into complete darkness and they would lie on their backs on the, on the canal boats and uh, a thing called legging it. So they would push the boat along using the sides of the, uh, of the tunnel. But yeah, three miles of uh, complete darkness carved through the Pennines over 200 years ago, carved by hand. So here at the entrance to Stanish Tunnel is where our journey of course ends in Marsden from the hustle and bustle of uh, Aspley Marina, lock number one this morning where we started to the uh, quiet power of Stanage Tunnel. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Nice little walk along the canal. If you have enjoyed it, give me a like, consider subscribing. I upload vlogs about once a month. So uh, I don't know where I'll be next time, but what I do know is I want you with me. So until the next one, bye.